To solve this challenge, let's draw the energy and the inspiration from Nelson Mandela's wisdom. It always seems impossible until it's done. The key to remember is that with each question you practice, you're one step closer to making the impossible possible. Let this drive you through preparation, tuning challenges into stepping stones for your success and making you smarter and more prepared along the way. You're presented with three shapes and the fourth shape is missing. You need to select the missing shape out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. You may think that this question is daunting and unsolvable, yet this particular one offers a unique opportunity for you to expand your knowledge and skills. Pause, take a deep breath, and engage with this question confidently. Your dedication to understanding and solving this problem is not just preparing you for the test, but for a successful career ahead. Together, we will conquer this challenge and enhance your resilience. Time's up. Are you ready to show your answer? Consider this. Doing your best on every question is an investment into your future success. Right answers add knowledge, while the wrong answers teach you resilience. Both are invaluable tools in your continuous journey of self-improvement. In fact, one of the most critical parts of your self-improvement journey is believing that making mistakes is not just part of your learning, but also crucial to it, since it enables personal and intellectual development. Speaking about mistakes, you might be curious to learn that the most typical mistake in this particular question is not considering that each shape in the matrix has its own pattern. And this pattern is very simple. Let's look into details. And let's start with the diamond. Diamond probably has the simplest pattern. It rotates three hours clockwise with every matrix. In the first shape, the diamond is at 12 o'clock. In the second shape, the diamond is at 3 o'clock. And then it moves to 6 o'clock. The circle alternates between the center and 6 o'clock position. In the first shape, it's at the center. Then it moves to 6 o'clock. And then it moves back to the center. Cross alternates between the corners at 5 and 11 o'clock. In the first shape, the cross is at 5 o'clock, then it moves to 11 o'clock, and then back to 5 o'clock. Triangle probably has the trickiest pattern. It's always next to the diamond. And if you look closely, it's either at the left of the diamond or at the bottom of the diamond. It is at the left of the diamond at shapes 1 and 3, and it is at the bottom of the diamond at shape 2. Don't you feel like Sherlock Holmes detecting all these patterns? Now it's easy to find the answer. The correct answer here is choice D. <sighs> With this question, I would like to echo the wisdom of Eleanor Roosevelt. You gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really look fear in the face. Let's confront this challenge with this assessment test questions head on, knowing that overcoming obstacles builds your resilience and your character. You are presented with four numbers, 17, 43, 37, and then comes the missing number you need to calculate, knowing that all four numbers average 30. Your choices for the answers are choice A, 21, choice B, 22, choice C, 23, and last but not least, choose D25. Well, this question may seem daunting at first, but I know you have the skills and creativity to tackle it. Trust in your abilities and let's explore all possible solutions together. Let's tackle it as a team. Are you prepared to showcase your response? Let's move forward and see where it leads us. And if uncertainty lingers, stay motivated. Every effort made, whether successful or not, brings valuable insights and opportunities for improvement. And the solution here might be simpler than you think. If four numbers average 30, then sum of all four numbers should be 4 multiplied by 30 and equals 120. Which means that missing number can be calculated by subtracting the known numbers from 120. Let's calculate it. 120 minus 17 minus 43 and minus 37 equals 23. So the correct answer here is choice C, 23. 
And now it's time to grab your thinking goggles. This question is so intricate, Sherlock Holmes would need a cheat sheet. You're presented with two diamonds. Each diamond has four numbers inside. In the first diamond, numbers are 8, 6, 2, and 4. And in the second diamond, numbers are 5, 2, 2, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 3. Choice C, 5. And last but not least, choice D, 7. Investigate closely and determine if the solution emerges from the careful observation. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have guessed, the key to solve this challenge is to determine the pattern. And to determine the pattern, you need to consider different possibilities, sequence and orders. The flow of calculation might not be the same each time. Take a close look at the diamond that has all the numbers. The pattern here is that the left and the right digits in the diamond represent a single number, which is calculated as a top number in the power of the bottom number. Let's look at the example. For example, the top number in the left diamond is 8, and the bottom number is 2. 8 in the power of 2 is 64. Now let's look at the missing value. 5 in the power of 2 is 25. So the correct answer here is choice C, 5. Let's dive into the world of letters with this amazingly tricky question that not only evaluates your English alphabet knowledge, but also tests your analytical skills and your strategies for tackling challenges effectively. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. The matrix has letters inside. The first row has letters A, B, and D. The second row has letters B, D, and F. And then the third row has letters D, F, and then comes the missing letter, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, H. Choice B, D. Choice C, F. And last but not least, choice D, K. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I mentioned that this question is a little tricky, so let me give you a hint. Take a close look and consider why would some boxes, some squares in the matrix would be in gray and some would be in white. Was it helpful? I hope it was. I've unlocked my answer and I'm excited to unveil some hints for you to share the answer. Let's explore the solution together. And obviously, if you've came up with the different and more creative alternative solution or tips how to solve these types of challenges effectively, make sure to post them in comments. To answer this question correctly, let's look at our matrix from a little different dimension. Each letter here corresponds to a specific place in the alphabet, which can be represented by the number. For example, letter A equals 1, letter B 2, C 3, and etc. If we follow this logic, we can replace all letters in all three rows with the numbers. So for the first row, the numbers will be 1, 2, and 4. For the second row, the numbers would be 2, 4, and 6. And for the third row, the numbers will be 4 and 6, and that would be the missing number. The next step is to determine what's happening with the numbers and how to calculate the missing number. Remember I gave you a hint? Hope you figured it out because numbers in the white squares here are the result of addition of numbers in the gray squares. Let's look at the example. For example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4 plus 2 equals 6. This is how the numbers in the white squares of the second row are calculated. 2 plus 4 equals 6. This is the result of the calculation in the third row, which would mean that the missing number on the intersection of 4 and 4 will be calculated as addition of 4 plus 4, which would be equal to 8. So the correct answer here is choice A, H, because H is the letter that corresponds to the number 8. <sighs> to get us on the right track with this question and help you solve it, I would like to quote Nelson Mandela. The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. So let's approach this assessment test question with determination and perseverance, recognizing that each obstacle we overcome brings us closer to success. You're presented with three buckets. 
buckets are hanging from the strings and you need to determine which bucket is the heaviest if all buckets are fixed to equal lengths flexible string. You have four choices. Choices are A, B, C, and last but not least, choice D, neither. The only thing obvious here is that this question may seem daunting at first, but I know you have the skills and creativity to tackle it. Trust in your abilities and let's explore all possible solutions together. Let's tackle it as a team. Are you ready to show your answer? I have no doubts that together we will decode this tough question. And I hope you did give it a try. Remember that every attempt, regardless of the outcome, contributes to your growth and development. To get to the answer, let's first look at the question in more details. We have three buckets. Each bucket is connected to the string connectors with the string of the same length. All string connectors are on the same string line. And what we can visually see is that bucket A is in the highest position, bucket B is a little bit lower, and the bucket C is in the lowest position. What does it tell us? What we know from physics is that when multiple objects are suspended from the flexible string, they will settle into the state of equilibrium. In the state of equilibrium, the tension in the string will be equal at all points along its lens. However, due to the differences in weight, the heavier bucket will exert a greater downward force on the string compared to the later buckets. As a result, the heavier bucket will cause more tension in the string, causing it to sag lower compared to the later buckets. This visual cue of the lower position of the bucket C can give you an impression that the bucket C is heavier, even though it may or may not be the case in the reality. But here's the caveat. This would only be true if the distance between string connectors would be the same. This introduces another consideration here because distance A for the bucket A is greater than distance B, which is greater than distance C for the bucket C. Because the distance shortens between the string connectors and distance A is greater than distance B, which is greater than distance C, this might explain why bucket B and bucket C is lower still. But it becomes obvious that because the distance between connector shortening it's impossible to determine which bucket is the heaviest, since shortening of the distance from A to C can explain lower positioning of the bucket, even if buckets would have the same weight. Think about it, because it's very logical. Even if the buckets would be of the same weight, by shortening the distance between string connectors, you will be able to lower the bucket. Based on this, I can conclude that the correct answer here is choice D, neither. But this question is not as obvious. Do you have different considerations? Please make sure to share your thoughts and rationale in comments so we can all learn. This particular test question is very tricky, but through the simplicity. Understanding this question is like trying to assemble IKEA furniture without the instructions. Sure, it might work eventually, but expect a few leftover screws and a sense of confusion. You are presented with the equation. 8 multiplied by 13 minus square root of 64 and you need to calculate the result of this expression which should be selected out of four possible choices choice a 96 choice b 98 choice c 102 and last but not least choice d 104 seems confusing right <laughs> but whether you're a current subscriber actively tackling these questions or someone contemplating a subscription in the future I have complete faith in your ability to overcome this challenge. Just make sure to grant yourself sufficient time to complete this question. Are you ready? I am going to continue this adventure. Let's navigate the complexities together and exchange the solutions. Believe it or not, your opinion counts and your insights could be the key to unlocking the mystery here. Before showing you the solution, I want to challenge you. Obviously, there is a typical way of solving this equation, but there is also an easier and faster way to solve this challenge if you use common sense. Can you figure it out? Well, the typical way to solve it would be multiply 8 by 13 
and then subtract the square root of 64, which would be 104 minus 8, and the end result of this would be 96. But I mentioned to you that there is a faster way to solve it, especially in your mind without the calculator. All you need to do is take a square root of 64, which would be equal to 8, and then you realize that you need to multiply 8 by 12 instead of 13, and the end result of this is 96. So the correct answer here is choice A, 96. Prepare to tackle this tricky question, designed not just to test your mental math abilities, but also to improve your critical thinking skills. You're presented with the circle, which is broken down into eight equal parts. Each part has a number, and the numbers are 14, 28, 42, 56, 41, 82, 24, and then comes the missing number. You need to determine the missing number and select it out of four possible choices. Choice A, 21. Choice B, 57. Choice C, 65. And last but not least, choice D, 96. Tricky question, don't you think so? But believe it or not, there is a logic in these numbers. At least this is what I found. And since I did find my answer, I'm thrilled to compare it with your solution. Let's continue so we can examine your strategies step by step. And if your brilliant approach is better or more efficient, don't hesitate to let us know in comments. Remember I told you that this question is tricky. Let's look in details why the answer is not obvious. Let's look at the numbers 14, 28, 42, and 56. As you can see, they all increase by 14. 14 plus 14 equals 28. 28 plus 14 equals 42. And 42 plus 14 equals 56. But then this pattern breaks, and you see numbers 41, 82, and 24. Unfortunately, this pattern is misleading, and it's there to confuse you. In this case, the random numbers could have been used as well. So what is the right solution? Take a look at the circle in the middle. If you draw the line from the number through the middle of the circle, the numbers on the opposite side of the circle are reflections of the numbers on the other side. Let's take a close look. For example, 14 becomes 41, 28 becomes 82, 42 becomes 24, and 56 then becomes 65. So the correct answer here is choice C, 65. Let's explore this mind-boggling assessment test together. This question goes beyond typical assessment and validates your attention to details as well as your practical problem-solving techniques. You are presented with three expressions and you need to find the fourth one. The first expression is 1 by 2 plus 3. The second expression is 2 by 3 plus 4. The third expression is 3 by 4 plus 5. The fourth expression would need to be selected and rationalized out of four possible choices. Choice A, 3 by 5 plus 4. Choice B, 4 by 5 plus 6. Choice C, 6 by 5 plus 4. And last but not least, choice D, 7 by 4 plus 5. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you find your answer? I think I discovered my solution. So let's go ahead and move forward and dissect our problem-solving methods together. I am eager to share with you my step-by-step -step process and encourage you to contribute your own ingenious insights in comments. The way I see the answer is that we need to ignore the mass signs, multiplication and plus signs, and focus on the numbers themselves. Because the pattern here is actually the sequence of numbers in each row. For example, let's take a look at the row 1. The numbers are 1, 2, 3. In second row, the numbers are 2, 3 and 4. In the third row, the numbers are 3, 4 and 5. So what we see is that the number in the next row starts with the middle number of the previous row which means that correct numbers for the row 4 would be 4, 5, and 6. So the correct answer here is choice B, 4 by 5 plus 6. In pursuit of mastering this question, let's draw an inspiration from a tenacity of JP Morgan. The first step toward getting somewhere is to decide that you are not going to stay where you are. Embrace this mindset as we tackle this financial terms definition assessment test question to enhance your individual capabilities and strengthen your financial acumen. Your objective with this question is to match financial acronyms with their definitions. The five acronyms you see on the screen are EPS, 
FOMO, LTB, NAV, and PEG. And the five choices to match them with are represented by Roman numerals. The first definition is a ratio of how much you are borrowing from a lender versus total value of the collateral. The second definition is the portion of a company's profit allocated to each outstanding share of a common stock. The third definition is a stock price to earnings ratio divided by the growth rate of its earnings. The fourth definition is anxiety that an exciting or interesting event may currently be happening elsewhere. And last but not least, the fifth definition is the value per share of a mutual fund or an ETF. Perhaps you're guessing I'll mention how daunting this question is. But instead, I'll remind you that every tough question during the assessment represents a chance for your development. Stop for a moment, place your trust in your own skills, and engage with the question with enthusiasm and perseverance. Together, we will work through this challenge, becoming stronger as a result. Time's up! Are you ready to show your answer? Keep in mind that you are learning here and remember that the answer can be correct or not. As you work through this question, remember that each attempt is a building block of your expertise. Correct or not, what truly matters is the effort and learning that each effort etches into your journey of excellence. Speaking about the incorrect answers, you might be curious to learn that the most typical mistake here is trying to solve the problem without understanding the acronyms. And there are five acronyms here. EPS stands for Earnings Per Share. FOMO stands for Fear of Missing Out. LTV stands for Loan to Value. NAV stands for Net Asset Value. And PEG stands for Price Earnings to Growth Ratio. Knowing the acronyms, we can look at the financial terms definitions now. Earnings per share represents the portion of the company's profit allocated to each outstanding share of the common stock. Fear of missing out is an anxiety that an existing or interesting event may currently be happening elsewhere, often aroused by the posts seen on the social media. Loan to value represents a ratio of how much you are borrowing from the lender versus the total value of the collateral. Net asset value represents the value per share of the mutual fund or an ETF. And last but not least, price to earnings to growth ratio represents the stock's price to earnings ratio divided by the growth rate of its earnings. And the only last remaining step is to match decimal IDs for the acronyms with the Roman numerals for the definitions. After going through this exercise, you will find out that the correct answer here is choice A. You know, I tried this question, and this particular one is like following a GPS, which constantly says, recalculating. So I'm taking a passenger seat and delegating the full responsibility of solving this particular one to you. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. The numbers in the first row are 11, 17, and 28. In the second row, the numbers are 25, 33, and 46. And in the third row, the numbers are 14. 16, and then comes the missing number, which you need to determine and calculate out of four possible choices. Choice A, 17, choice B, 18, choice C, 19, and last but not least, choice D, 21. I have full confidence that you can do it. Take a scenic route to the answer and make sure your GPS is calibrated. Once you've cracked the code and have the solution, make sure to share your answer in comments for a victorious discussion. I am excited to learn about your solution and offer my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck solving this intriguing challenge. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. 
please leave feedback, suggestions or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.